Welcome to the Landmark Theater's Q&A podcast. In this podcast, you will hear a discussion with director Roger Allers from the film Khalil Gibran's The Prophet, recorded at the Landmark West LA. Hi, everybody. I'm Jamie Bolio. Uh, Roger and I worked together on The Lion King. Roger was my director on The Lion King. I was on the SCAR unit, and it is indeed a pleasure for me to be working with Roger again on The Prophet. Uh, I'm, I work with G-Kids on the promotion and distribution of the film, and, and it is really a thrill to be here today. So uh, Roger was the director on not only The Lion King, but on a Disney short called The Little Match Girl. So if you've never watched it, I hope you have an opportunity to watch The Little Match Girl, and also with Sony on open season. So again, it is my, my uh, pleasure and privilege to welcome Roger Allers. Thanks, Jamie. Hi, everyone. Nice to see you here. Um, well, this is an unusual project, uh, for one thing, because we worked with people all around. There, you know, as, you, as you could see, there, the different poems were animated by different people from around the world. Um, uh, so it's a, an unusual uh, coming together of, of different talents. I, I was brought on to uh, adapt the book, uh, create a story to support these poems, and enlarge upon Gibran's story. Um, um, it has been uh, a collaboration of people uh, from all over the world, as I said, not just in terms of the, the talent that animated, but also uh, the finance, and it came from everywhere. A lot of people uh, put, all, put a lot of uh, energy into this movie. Anyway, I'm really here to answer questions. If people have questions, how long did the movie take? Um, let's see, I'll divide that into two pieces. The two originating producers spent seven years getting the rights to the book. Uh, Khalil Gibran left the rights to the Prophet to his village in Lebanon. Uh, he was born in Lebanon but moved to uh, the U.S. with his mother when he was 11. But he left the rights to his book and the Prophets and all to his village in Lebanon. And the committee that was established there its membership would change yearly. So once they'd start getting <laughs> an agreement together, and then the next year, they were all different people. So it took a long time. From the beginning of um, me starting to come up with a concept, to create a story through the, produ the pre-production, through the animation, and to the very end of it, it was two and a half years, which is very, very fast for an animated movie. It may sound like a long time. Uh, which sections people were going to animate? Right, uh, yes, it was up to me to, in, when I was creating the storyline, to decide which poems to include. Uh, mostly I wanted them to feel like they were integrated into the story and, and come out naturally. Uh, so um, uh, many artists had been approached before I came on and had been asked, what would you like to do? Which chapter would you like to do? And uh, I'm afraid a couple of them had already chosen chapters by the time I came on and I had to say, once I came up with the idea, I said, we're not doing that one anymore. Can you do another? How did the uh, project get started? Oh, that's a great question. Um, it started with two people in Ohio. They're not filmmakers, but they really had a passion. They wanted to do Gibran's book. Uh, and they were the ones who went after the rights for the book, and they were the ones who worked so long and so hard to do that. Um, but they didn't know how they were going to do it. When they started off, they were thinking of it possibly being a live action movie. Um, so that's, that was in their mind as they were going after the rights. They brought on a producer uh, named Clark Peterson. He's produced other things, um, Monster with Charlize Theron and some other movies. Uh, but he came on, and they were talking at one point, at, by that point they were thinking of just doing um, the poems. And he thought, well, maybe that's sort of like a Fantasia. And then he made the suggestion of doing it with, in animation, which was kind of a radical idea. Um, so that was his idea, was doing it with music and animation. He brought on Salma Hayek. There are quite a few producers on this movie. He brought on Salma Hayek and when she came on, she thought, when it was going to be like 15 poems in a row done by different artists, she felt like that might just be hard to slog through for an audience. Uh, I mean, maybe for the real animation 
fans, they'd love to do that, like walking through a gallery, but she felt like there was the need for a stronger narrative to help people through the movie. So um, that's where I came on. That's when they approached me and uh, asked me to do that. Uh, the question that was asked was, what's my favorite poem? Hmm. And why? Um, I, I love all the poems, you know, um, some of my favorites. I will say some of my favorites um, that stand out for me. Uh, I love the Freedom Poem by uh, Michal Sosha, the, the Polish animator. I just think his graphic style, the one with the birds and pulling up the tree, is so strong, and I love that. And I think it expresses the text in a really inventive way. Um, I, I love the Britzi Brothers uh, version of Death. They're the ones that are very heavily rendered. I think it's, it's very graceful and very, uh, very tender. Um, God, so many of them. I love Nina Paley's quirky uh, sort of cutout feeling animation, the one on children with the, the arrows and the bows and, the, and her symbols, the way she uh, developed them, I think, are so clever. And oh, gosh, it goes on and on. So I guess I'm not narrowing it down to one. What percentage of the book went into the production? What percentage? I'm so bad with numbers. If you ask me what the footage of this room is, I couldn't answer you. What percentage? Um, well, there were eight. I chose eight poems ultimately uh, to fit into the narrative. But much of what Mustafa says within the framing story that I also wrote, I also took from the book. Um, the basic story structure of that a man. Uh, Mustafa cannot leave this place and he sees his ship and then he decides to go to his boat and people ask him questions on the way. I kept that as a structure. And uh, one interesting thing is that the Gibran Committee, the Gibran Society in Lebanon, also gave us full rights to use all of the artwork because Gibran was certainly uh, quite a painter. You know, in the book there are all those illustrations that are, are with each poem. And um, so uh, Mustafa's walls are plastered with very simplified renditions of his paintings. Uh, and many of the animators also drew from imagery of uh, Gibran's paintings. Um, as a percentage, it's very hard for me to say that, but you know, does that give you an idea? Sure. The question was, did, did Bill Plimpton do one of these? And uh, Bill Plimpton uh, did eating and drinking. His, his, very, his trademark uh, style are these very loose, kind of scribbly forms. Uh, he, he's, he's a really funny animator. A lot of his other work, if you're familiar with it, is all very irreverent and uh, naughty. And uh, he was an unusual choice for this, but we thought he was safe dealing with food. <laughs> Actually, he had us going there for a while because when the guy eats the apple and it's going down and then it's circling around and you st we all started going, oh, where is this going? <laughs> but then it ended up in the, the hand. <laughs> Who was the demographic um, aimed towards? Who was, because it was very deep. It was a very deep, beautiful story. The, the goal, uh, and, and this, uh, when I first met Salma, uh, she said what she would like to do would be to make this very available, very accessible to, she said, someone as young as five and all the way up, you know, uh, which is a tall order. It's a tall order to interpret sort of deep philosophy and, and make it uh, accessible for all ages. And I think some, some young children will, will ride with it and enjoy it um, and... And I, and I always, I, I don't like to, um, I don't like to limit uh, the idea of what children can appreciate because I, I think children also can be very deep. Um, people, uh, children sometimes uh, through no choice of their own have to um, face very uh, deep and serious things. Um, I know while I worked on Lion King, uh, after Lion King I got some letters from people who actually, you know, uh, like their husband died and the children, sometimes the movies help. Um, 
And actually, Selma said that it, uh, her child, when she was four, had been quite troubled by the whole concept of death, but after watching Lion King, she felt okay about it. So um, these sort of subjects, I think, are, are absolutely suitable for children. Some people might argue with me. <laughs> you know, some people certainly felt that like Lion King was too scary and not, not good for children, and um, you know, that's okay. The, the children do have uh, different sensitivities, and um, I'm aware of that. It's hard to say who it's leveled at, what age group. Uh, I hope it's accessible. Um, I think the book in itself it kind of appeals more to um, sort of a young adult, beginning with a young adult, and, and certainly can, uh, can be uh, inspirational for people of any age. It's interesting, as you go through your life, you, you dip back into the book, and then different poems will, will hit you differently. I know that certainly has been true for me. Maybe you can talk a little more about uh, how the, your process for deciding which poems were going to be uh, were going to be in the piece, and if there were any poems that you looked at and you read through, and you just immediately had ideas about what you wanted to do with it or who you wanted to get involved with it. Well, you know, when I started trying to work up the story, uh, I of course went back to the book and was reading through all the poems. I, I knew, even before reading them, I knew there were a few that were so popular that we had had been used so much. Uh, right, again, we'll be right, we'll be right back. Uh, we, I knew that um, you know there were there were a few that had been used quite a bit, like in people's weddings uh, and other situations. So I knew uh, that. The, Poem on children was a very popular one and, and meant a lot to people. The poem on marriage and the poem on love, and I know those two, there have been a lot of quote, quotes from those poems for people's, in people's wedding services, and I felt like I wanted to honor those, and it wasn't hard because those are like one of those, those three are such really basic uh, poems that deal with such basic things of life. Uh, otherwise, it was just as I, started imagining the story of Mustafa and who, who we might be coming in contact with, what seemed like a logical thing that would come out of the situation. I mean, I knew the freedom poem was, was right there at the beginning when I imagined him as being a, a political prisoner. As soon as I had thought of that, then the freedom poem, immediately I knew he was going to be discussing that with either Halim or someone else. Uh, first it was with Halim, and then it turned into Almitra. Um, so it, I guess it was just looking for all those kind of basic things of life that would naturally come out, uh, come up. Like he comes across a wedding, or people are trying to give him food, or or s someone is in an, is having a hard time expressing his love. Um, why was this uh, production an independent production? I guess because the people who thought it up were little independent people, as I said. The people who initiated this were, were two people in Ohio, and these, it's like a little snowball that gets started, and it picks up people along the way, and that's how this thing grew. It, it didn't come out of a large studio, just, um, it's just way, the way it happened. Um, I'm sorry? That was my decision? No, I was asked to come aboard. I was one of those additional elements that that landed on the snowball and it got bigger. Um, and certainly they're happy to have people with names like Selma and myself, you know, to draw attention to it. But it w really we got onto it for no glory. Uh, we really wanted, we did it because we all just really cared very much about it. And really it was something that meant a lot to us. Um, so many people worked on this picture. It, it, um, I'm probably speaking out of class, but it wasn't that well paying, you know. Really, people did it because they really loved it. Um, people like Yo-Yo Ma m made room in his schedule. The guy is probably booked up for three years, and he wanted to do it because he loved the book. So uh, a lot of this movie happened because of a collection of individuals' passion. So um, that's how this one happened. Okay. Anyway, love talking to you. Thank you.